In this Magnet 5 how-to video, I'll be explaining how to use the set collection routine as a traverse. From the main screen of Magnet Field, we'll go into Configure and then Survey, and then we'll just edit our total station configuration to go through some of the settings that we need to look at. Once you have hit Edit on the optical configuration, that we have a name and the type is robotic, Manufacturer is Topcon and the model is the instrument type being used, in this case a GT1000, and then we can hit next. Ensure the connection method is Bluetooth Total Station and hit next. And on the search and track, ensure that fixed averaging is the tracking measurement and then hit next. We are doing single face readings using direct. During the set collection routine, this is where we will dictate the direct and reverse settings, each observation at each point. This is just solely for the back site measurement. We can hit next, then we can select our EDM type and the prism going to be used. In this case, we're using a zero constant and traverse backside target kit and then we can hit next. We can select the EDM type to be used. In this case, we're using rapid. Rapid or fine is recommending for these observations as tracking will not give you the distance resolution required for the accuracy. And then we can simply hit next all the way to the end of the configuration as we are not changing any of the survey or stakeout setting. When we get to the last screen, we want to scroll down to the bottom and ensure that Traverse Advance is ticked on. This setting just enables you when you are doing the set collection and you've finished on Occupation 1, the software will ask you if you want to go to number 2 and the software will change your backside orientation um, and prompt for the next point to move on to for you. Once you are happy, then you can hit the green tick and then from the home screen we can go back into Configure and then Coordinate System ensure that you're in the correct coordinate system for the job with the right projection or a localization and datum and geoid and then back to the main screen of magnet field we can then go into edit and then points we can see we only have a starting control point here and we are doing a closed loop traverse and we are using a azimuth to begin our traverse again from the main screen of magnet field we will go into connect ensure optical is ticked and then we will hit connect we'll search for local bluetooth devices and then pick the serial number from the list and then once connected and from the main screen we'll go into survey and then set collection because we haven't done a back site setup yet it will prompt us to so we can simply pick our occupation point from the list or from the map and remembering to enter in the instrument height and then in this case we are not picking a backside point so we are using an azimuth and remembering to enter in the backside target height as well and you can see from the symbol a quick indication of the prism constant being used and if you need to change it you can hold down on the icon to change the prism in this case we are measuring a distance and we're leaving the observation info ticked so we can type in our temperature and pressure settings as we go through the job to ensure that we are applying the correct settings to the EDM to get the most accurate distance readings. And then we can hit next. And this is where we can configure the set collection. So the angle sequence, in this case, we're gonna use backsight, foresight, and then foresight, backsight. This is user defined and you have a default class list, but in this case we will make our own by hitting the three dot button next to class and we will go add. So this is where we can define the number of sets. There is a preset value of one to five, but you can add your own up to 99 sets. The distance you can read on direct and reverse and also for the vertical angle, direct and reverse, or on single face readings. And the maximum number of distances you can set is five. You can't set this up to 99. And you can also set your tolerance values down below. And once you are happy, you can hit the green tick to save the class. Back on the config screen, make sure that that new class is selected. Ensure that we are setting the circle to the azimuth that we are beginning on. We don't want to set the circle at the start of each set. We are doing this fully automatic, so we are ticking auto turn on. Search after turn is search and track. And we will tick on auto accept the measurement as well. 
we do not have predefined points in the job so we're not ticking this we are observing them as we go around the traverse so we can hit next we can select our measurement type target type and prism backsite constants to be used you do not need to have auto target ticked and you can hit next we're now in the normal observation screen and we can hit the lock symbol next to the stop to look on to our target to define our backsite we can also quickly go up into the EDM or the COG tab in case we quickly need to change our EDM or our prism constant details. Under the magnet symbol we need to go under measure and then traverse. You will notice once you have selected traverse the top panel will now say traverse set collection normal mode to, as a visual indicator that you're in the traverse mode. You can see that the backside target height has come through, no point name because we're using the azimuth. And once you have sighted your backside point, you can then hit measure. You will now be prompted to enter in a point name to begin your traverse. And you can give this a code. And remembering to enter in the target height for the point to be observed and the correct prism constant and you can now turn the instrument to that second point once you are locked on to it as soon as you hit measure it will begin its set one and because we are only shooting to one point we are not adding in any other stations from this occupation so we will hit the back green arrow to indicate that we want to measure the next foresight for that second point and we are not using the red record with little green plus symbol because we are not adding in a second point from that observation. Once you hit that green back arrow you will now notice that the instrument will turn into phase two. It will start measuring its first set of five and it will remain in this screen until all observations have been complete. If an obstruction appears it will ask you to re-measure or you can skip the observation if something has permanently blocked the target. As you can see now we are on to the last set measuring our backside to close out the first occupation point and once completed we are now prompted with a report, a measure set collection report. We notice down the bottom left we have a green tick saying that all observations are within the tolerance specified for that class. We can hit the report and we can scroll down and we can get the measurement report for that occupation including all angles and distances recorded. We can save this out into a text file into a certain directory for QA QC purposes. And once saved we can simply hit accept and this is where that traverse advanced tick box at the end of the config comes into play and we can see it's asking us do we want to move the instrument now? In this case we are saying yes because we are moving to occupy our second point and you'll see the software has now changed straight back to the backside routine and it has now made our occupation point the point we just observed and the backside target point the first occupation point. This is now when the user would move the instrument and reset up their targets and measure their heights again and once the instrument is settled all targets are in place we can then enter in the new instrument height and target height and then hit next enter in any temperature and pressure changes and then hit next and again we come back to the backside screen for the occupation and backside we have a point name and the instrument height the azimuth calculated and just double check we are setting the circle to the azimuth we can turn the instrument towards point one and hit the lock symbol. Once you are happy you're getting a distance reading, you can hit measure. If required, you can look through the backside residuals and then you can hit back. Then you'll go straight to the config screen in case you want to use a new class or change any settings and we can hit next. We're not changing any prism settings and we can hit next. We are straight back into the traverse set collection normal view as per up the top to double check we can quickly go into the magnet symbol ensure there is a tick next to traverse and now we can observe our third occupation point entering the name a code and the new target height once we are getting a distance we can hit measure 
Once that point has been measured, again we will hit the green back arrow to begin the set collection routine at that occupation point and we are not adding in any more observations from that single point. And now we can leave the instrument to continue and do all five sets again from this second occupation point. To make this video quicker, we are skipping the rest of the observations from occupation point two we are skipping point three and we will skip to the end of occupation four to show you how we close back onto the first point. We are now onto the fourth occupation point and we can see here the software has already got our point four and point three as our back sight. All we need to do now is change the instrument height and the back sight target height. And again we are ticking the observation info to change any temperature and pressure settings as required. We are now back on the backside normal screen. Once you are locked on to the target, again hit the measure button to record your backside, and you can scroll through and look at your backside residuals as required and save out a report if necessary. And then we can hit back and then we'll go back to the config. We are not changing anything in the config so we can simply hit next. And again we are not changing any prism settings so we'll hit next. And now we are back on the Traverse Set Collection normal screen and the instrument will take a reading to the backside point. Once locked on you can hit measure. Because we are closing back onto our first point, we are not picking a new point name. We have to ensure that we name the first point correctly, in this case point 1, and enter in the target height. What this does is in the software it knows that you are shooting to the first occupation point or the closing point you were to close the traverse onto. You are not giving it a new name. The software needs to know it has to be the same name. So once we are locked on to the target we can hit the measure button and again we can hit the green rotate button to start our five sets to our first occupation point. And once we are at the end of the five sets of the last point, we will see the traverse results and the report. And again, we can save this out as a report for later use. And then we can hit accept on the results screen. You will see a warning saying that you can't modify the coordinates of point one by the current measurement. This is just a software letting you know that there is already a point with that name in the job and you can't override that point coordinate because it has been already used in the job as a backsite or an occupation and we can see here the point check screen appears. On the point check screen we can see that the software recognises that there is already point one and we can see the offsets from the coordinate that's already in the job to the new calculated coordinates from the occupation and what we want to do we can't override and the software won't allow you we don't want to rename it to point Five. We want to store it as a check shot. So we hit the store as check and then hit accept. Again, the software will prompt you if you want to move the instrument because this is our last occupation. We'll hit no and we will close out of the routine just by hitting the red X and go back to the main screen of magnet field. And then we'll go into calculate traverse and then into adjustment. So we're going to perform a compass rule or a bad itch adjustment in the field. If you wish to do a least squared adjustment you'll have to do this in the magnet tool software in the office. Magnet field doesn't have the least square ability in the field. Once in adjustment we'll pick the start point. In this case it was point one. Because we close back onto the same point, our end point will be point one. If you don't have any points displaying here as an endpoint, you have incorrectly done the traverse routine in the field. You haven't tied in correctly to the points in the correct order, and the observations will have to be looked at in Magnet Tools in order to perform an adjustment. As the Magnet Field software hasn't recognised a full traverse, you'll have to look at the raw data or the MJF file in Magnet Tools to be able to do a compass or a least squared adjustment. Once you have picked the start and end point, you can tick adjust elevations or side shots if any were taken. In this case, we we're going to save the results into a new job. So hit new job, we'll just leave the default name. So this means all results will go into a new job and not override your existing magnet job. We will apply the compass rule. We don't have the angle balance option because we didn't have a closing angle at the occupation point. So we'll go next. And here we can see the traverse adjustment results. And we can save this out as a text file. 
and we can scroll down and we can see the length of our traverse, starting and closing point, the starting backside azimuth, our closing check shot and also our misclose and our errors. We can see the adjustment for each point and once you're happy you can simply hit home and we'll go back into calculate traverse and now we'll perform a closure so again we'll pick the start point and the end point in this case they're both one and again if there is no end point Dean you will need to look at your data in magnet tools in the office to be able to perform a compass or a least squared adjustment once you pick the start and end point you can simply hit next and now you will see the traverse closure results note that this is only showing you the closure accuracy and we haven't performed an adjustment and again you can save this out as a report if you wish and once you are happy you can close out and return back to the main screen of magnet field and this concludes the magnet 5 how to traverse set collection